What's up, TFC family and friends? Travis is here with another inspiring story. Today we have another heart transplant recipient like myself. Um, he's a chef in San Antonio. He does a lot of wine and cheese and some really cool stuff around the city. So I'm gonna let him introduce himself, share his story, and uh, hopefully what we share today will inspire some of you to, to take action in your life and make some big goals out there. So take it away, Tom. Hi, Hi uh, TFC. How's everybody out there? Um, hope you're all having a great day like I am. Um, first of all, my name's Tom. Uh, I am a heart recipient. I uh, received my gift of life on 28 November 2006. So this Thanksgiving, I'll be celebrating my 14th anniversary. And uh, the, only, the only sad part of that is, unfortunately, this year with not being able to travel, um, my donor family won't be involved. Uh, we actually traveled and met them a few years back. Uh, my girlfriend and I went there, what, two, now go three years ago and spent Thanksgiving with them. Um, it's kind of an amazing situation. Uh, anyway, to start this whole thing off, uh, before I got sick, uh, I was an active duty first sergeant uh, in the Army. Uh, I did 24 years active duty. And towards about year 23, I started noticing that PT in the morning was a little bit more difficult, uh, you know, running a little hard uh, until one day I was walking up to my office on the second floor and I had to stop midway to catch my breath. And I thought, that, that's really weird. Uh, later on that afternoon, uh, after eating dinner, I found I couldn't catch my breath. So my wife being the good medic she was, took my blood pressure, it was ugly. Um, she gave me the, wait a minute, and went and packed a bag and dragged me up to the hospital in Würzburg in Germany. And I spent 12 hours in the ER. Then they shipped me around the, around the corner uh, to the Würzburg University Hospital. Um, I spent a month in the hospital, two weeks in IC, uh, single ICU, 24-hour uh, service, the whole bit. And I was pretty sick. Uh, the first morning I woke up, the chief of cardiology came in and said, hey, uh, in his best German English, uh, and tried to describe what I had. And he says, no, you're sick. And I said, no, no I'm not so bad. It's just a winter cold. And he says, no, no, you need a heart transplant. It's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on. Um, and he explained what I had. Uh, after some convincing the army, uh, they sent me back here to San Antonio. Um, and good thing they did, because I've run into a great family of support personnel. Um, uh, you know, for everything from Dr. Mike to uh, the folks at Methodist Transplant, uh, it's been pretty, uh, pretty easy for me. Um, but to go back a little bit, um, before I, or when I got sick, I found that um, I, I felt useless, you know, uh, besides feeling sick and exhausted. Um, I found that I couldn't do anything. Uh, you know, I'm the man of the house. I should be able to mow the grass, do some shopping or fix things around the house. Uh, that, that changed. I wasn't able to mow the grass without being completely exhausted for a week after. So I stopped. Uh, I couldn't help clean the house. I couldn't really fix anything unless it was very, very minor. So I found myself sitting in a chair 24 hours a day, pretty much. My big event for the week would be to go to HEB. <clears throat> I, I had to push the cart. Um, because they wouldn't let me let go. It was usually if I let go and I bent over to pick something up, I tumbled on my head and passed out. So uh, that was not a good thing. Um, thank goodness that's all fixed with the transplant. Um, uh, let's see, what else can I do? Uh, yeah, that, that, that was my life before. I sat in a chair and I watched the cooking channel, uh, which leads up to a story later on. Um, I watched the cooking network for probably uh, the, the year and a half that we were here before the transplant. Um, after the transplant, or let's lead up to the transplant. Um, the day before Thanksgiving in 2006, I got a phone call and they told me they were gonna put me on the transplant list. Cool. So we went to Thanksgiving dinner around the corner at my brother's house and had something to be thankful for. Uh, driving home that afternoon, my wife noticed all the pretty lights. It was Christmas, you know, that thing. And she decided, well, we should put lights up. So here I am at uh, an IF of 10, which basically 10% heart function. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit straining. Uh, ladder on the front of the house, 
lights in my teeth, staple gun in my hand, and I'm going up this ladder. <clears throat> well, I don't know who it was or what happened, but the ladder slipped, rode down the entire face of the house, uh, and I crashed with it. Um, so on the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, when they called and said, hey, we have a heart, you're the standby, and then an hour later called and said, uh, if you're here by two, it's yours, a um, little bit of panic went on. Uh, so I, I had to explain as I walked into the hospital when all the nurses ran up to greet me uh, and they looked at me in horror and said, what did you do? I had, this was all road rash. My arms were road rash from hitting the concrete. My fingers were bashed up and bruised because they hold on the ladder. Yeah, it was <laughs> a little bit close. They almost said, you know, well, now we can't do anything. But fortunately, nothing was infected. I didn't have a fever. They, and we were able to get through it. Um, Ten days later, I was back in my house. <laughs> about making an entrance. Yeah, it was. It was kind of <laughs> like, well, you know, life doesn't stop. You know, you still have stuff to do, even if you're mm -hmm. sick and don't feel good. It's, you know, you know, when you have the flu, you still have to get up and pet the or walk the dog or whatever. It's, it's stuff that has to happen. Yeah. Granted, we didn't need the lights on the house, but uh, it was part of life. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, it's Christmas. Um, I mean, that's, I mean, I appreciate you sharing all of that backstory and uh, yeah. especially for a lot of our family and a lot of the, the kids that have had transplants, uh -huh. we don't remember how sick we were. We don't remember oh, what it no. felt like. And all no. we know, all, or a lot of us or a lot of the kids that I know and that we work with, they feel like they have this, like this burden, this curse by having a transplant when the truth of the matter is they yeah. would have been in a position like yours or worse yeah. or yeah. deteriorating even more from that if they hadn't gotten. Oh, most definitely. So I, I really wanted to like pause and just acknowledge that it does sometimes, you know, it feels like it stinks because you have to go get blood work and you have to go to your oh, doctor's yeah. all the time. And like, oh my God, yeah. Pain in the butt. You like, yeah. it's all this extra stuff that kids don't normally have to do. No. But they, you know, they, if they, if they knew what it was like when they were younger, if they had had that same energy, the yep. same, you know, kidney function, liver function, heart function, whatever yep. it was, then they may have not even been able to go to school. They may have not ever even been able to try out for choir or basketball or whatever. It was. So the the transplant is, although it can seem, you know, Daunting. cumbersome to have to do all these extra things, it's such a blessing to be able to to hear your side and know that there's such a big comparison, such a big change. So now let's move obviously past that. So yeah. what you know, you said you watched cooking shows for a year and a half before your transplant. Was that kind of the part of the catalyst into your yeah, your second career? It was. Um, I sat there and I've noticed that after about a year of watching, I was like, I started pointing things out. You know, I was like, I, I could do that better than that guy. Or he did that wrong. I don't care if he's a big chef. He did that wrong. Um, and uh, one, one day, um, slightly after the transplant, uh, the San Antonio paper did an article on the Pearl Brewery. And they mentioned who was there. And this was, this was probably, I don't know, 2011 late 2011. And um, I, I looked, I read the article and I was interested in the Culinary Institute of America because the folks I watched on the Food Network had gone there. Michael Simon, uh, Alex Guarnaschelli, uh, Kat Cora, all those big chefs that I had been watching on there had gone to this school. Anthony Bourdain, one of the most famous. Um, so I went down and I, you know, poke my nose around. They were still doing lots of construction. The way it looks now is nothing like what it looked way back then. Uh, half the buildings were, weren't even there. And uh, I knocked on the door up front. It was about lunchtime. And the school secretary was sitting there. And she said, well, nobody's here. She said, ah, it's lunchtime. So she locked the door and took me on a tour. And, you know, walked me from the, the bakery and the library upstairs to the classrooms and then down to the, the, the the skills kitchen where everybody learns and the, the really fancy Latin kitchen where they do closed circuit uh, video recording to broadcast all to all the other branches of the school. Um, and I thought, wow, this is really kind of neat. So I asked her how to get in and she said, well, you need six months experience in culinary. And I, well, I was, a, I blew stuff up for a living, you know, it's not, not kind of in that same vein. And she said that even as a first sergeant, picking up the food at the mess hall, and driving it to all my, my crew uh, didn't quite count. So uh, 
they set me up with a, an appointment with the chef out at the, uh, the food bank. And uh, I signed on with him. And for six months, I got up at four in the morning and drove out to be at the food bank by five in the morning. Um, I worked with their culinary students who were there at no cost. Um, I worked with the, uh, the prison trustees out of one of the local units that were about to be paroled. Uh, and we're working on life skills. And uh, I did that for six months. It was quite an education. And, but they signed the letter that said I had done six months. And that Monday, that was on a Friday, that Monday I started school. And uh, two years later, I was done. And it was, it was fast, but it was long. It was easy, but it was hard. It was a kind of a mix of everything. Uh, it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but it was a blast. Holy cow, I, I've eaten stranger foods than I ever thought I would. The first day of gastronomy class when the, the instructor walked in, handed a jar to the first kid in class and started running it around the class, told you to take one. Uh, they were salted dried crickets. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, going through hospitality, we had a world's food class and definitely had to eat a cricket and a scorpion and some other oh, yeah. Yeah. interesting, yeah. interesting yeah, thank God, though, they were still working on the pearl, had jackhammering and welding, and, and somebody set off the fire alarm. So we did escape having to eat the, um, the century egg, which oh. is a fermented yeah. <laughs> baby duck egg thing. And ugh. I mean, I don't, I don't, or two, they're not good. Yeah, I don't pull away from much, but I didn't know if I could get that in my mouth. Uh, it's more the look of it than the, it is. It, yeah. And the, it's got kind of a funky smell, so yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But um, I dodged that bullet. That one. But um, uh, moving I mean, on, the what you the what uh, the work that you put in to get into school mm -hmm. is just awesome, right? Like oh. you, oh, yeah. you had all this life experience. You've mm -hmm. been through all these other things, yeah. and they were still like, "Yeah, no, you still you still got to do the minimum." Yeah. You do. And you have to do. You have to take library science. You have to eat the cricket. Yeah. You have to, yeah. yeah. You gotta eat the cricket. You got to go work at the food bank. Like that's yeah. such a important thing to to know is that, you know, even if you have experience in one thing, doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy or just give and no. take, walk in. No. And that's, no. I mean, that's great. Like, you know, you've worked hard to get your, your I'm, title. I'm also very grateful to be able to, to have been able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, my first thought when I was retiring from the military was that I was going to become a teacher. Um, I kind of got bitten by the bug about 10 years before that and was working towards doing that. And, but then when I got sick, the poor perfusion, you know, the heart's not pumping to all the organs. And, and one of the things that suffers is your memory and, you know, brain function. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't remember my name if it wasn't my name. Um, matter of fact, it was a kind of an inside joke. My family actually gave me a notebook to oh. write things down. And, you know, so I didn't forget things. And honestly, to this day, I still do that. Uh, a different notebook, but I still write lists and keep track of what I have to do every day. Um, it's a lot better. I don't forget as much, but I still really do. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've just like, what is the name of that? And, or just lose a word completely. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I chalk that up to old age now. I used to blame ProGraph or the uh, prednisone. Yeah, I blame the steroids, um, but I can't do that anymore. I'm not on there, so it's like I can't do it. <laughs> At least you and other, you know, transplant patients kind of have an excuse. A lot of people just forget. Yeah. They, they forget. just forget. <laughs> yeah, I they just, just forget. Now, now I just blame old age. You know, it's like, like hey. get up there. it's fine. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> it's a senior moment. Don't worry. It'll come back later. Um, let's see. So I did the culinary school thing, um, and then uh, I guess – uh, well, going back a lot earlier than that, um, after my transplant, you know, you do the lots of the, that first year is nothing but clinic and, and biopsies and all kinds of stuff. Well, towards the end of the, the first, well, I guess it was not even the end. It was about the middle of the first year. Uh, in June uh, was our anniversary. So we always traveled during our anniversary. We went to years before I got sick. We traveled from Europe. Uh, where we were stationed to Italy, to Amsterdam, to France, to yeah, all over the place. We skied, we did everything always on our anniversary. Uh, well, now 
we had spent a few years where we couldn't do anything being sick. And now it was like, all right, you're fixed. We got to do something. Um, so we asked Doc if we could travel. And he said, sure. Tell the nurse where you want to go, and she'll give you instructions and stuff. So we told her we would want to go to Mexico. And she came in and closed the door behind her and leaned on the door and looked at me. Mexico? Really? You couldn't be going to Canada or something, right? No. So they gave me the permission. They said you can go. And uh, they gave me a card for uh, the helicopter Metalift, um, an, air, an air company that would fly us out if something happened, the name of about 10 different pharmacies, two hospitals. It, it was like I went in there loaded. I knew how to get in and out. So, um, But everything went well. Uh, we actually stayed uh, on the Yucatan. And with my new heart, I was able to uh, – we snorkeled the cenotes. Uh, we snorkeled in the ocean. Um, we climb, I climbed the tallest pyramid in uh, Mexico at that time and actually sat because the pyramids were for sacrifice, you know, where they would, you know, take hearts and things. So I sat on the stone where they would offer the heart to the gods. And uh, I thought that was kind of uh, just. Uh, what else did we do? Goodness. Uh, we. Huh? Oh yeah, we swam with dolphins, which got me in trouble. Um, you know, I, they, they said, well, don't forget to send pictures. So I sent a bunch of pictures back. And when I got to my next um, clinic visit, again, my coordinator came in, closed the door and leaned on it again. I knew I was in trouble. And she said, dolphins? You swam with dolphins? They have diseases. They have bacteria. They have, I was like, I'm all right, it's all right. But the picture that they, that I sent them that got me in trouble. They actually blew up and put on the wall in the clinic for a while. That's so, funny. <laughs> I, I, my um, uh huh. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else did we do? Uh, when my daughter was getting ready for college, uh, we actually took a trip through New Orleans into uh, Bay St. Louis in Mississippi and uh, built a ha built three houses for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we, we worked on three houses and. Uh, I still correspond with the last one that we did. I uh, still correspond with the new owners every Christmas. Um, so from there, after culinary school, um, I met a lady who started a creamery here in Shirts. And um, I've been working with the creamery for the past going on five and a half years. And I started out making the cheese. Then I started moving into more of the marketing and uh delivery and sales work and i'm still doing that um yeah so we've spread our our cheese a little bit further up through the hill country uh matter of fact uh when i get off here i have a phone call to make back down to houston where we're hoping to get our cheese in a winery down there it's kind of fun um oh in between all of that uh, i guess in between about halfway through culinary school uh, a friend of ours organized a group of friends, uh, transplant recipients, and some support family members to train for six months to do the rock and roll half marathon here in San Antonio. And uh, my daughter and I ran, and Doc and another transplant recipient who was much older than we were. And uh, Doc and Russ actually beat us by three minutes across the finish line. And that still sticks with me this day. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Dr. Kwan is a, a runner. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but he was running with Russ, and Russ was 72 at the time, and uh, they beat us by three minutes, and grr, it still grates my craw. Um, but, but what an experience. It's the second uh, half marathon I've ever run. Uh, the first one was many years before that when I was stationed in Korea, and we had to do it. It wasn't an option. This was an option, but oh, it didn't hurt any less. Um, it still hurts. It's something I will not do. If I'm running today, you should probably run too, because something's chasing me that shouldn't be chasing me. Um, other than that, I do not run. Um, done with that. Um, but now things are mostly normal. Uh, you know, life, life is what it is. Um, the only real strange part of every day is having to take meds twice a day. Um, I mean, really? That's not the, it's not that difficult. It's a lot worse. I mean, yeah. Um, just, yeah. I mean, everything you've shared is just awesome. I mean, you, yeah. 
purely got life out of the gift of life. I, I do. A lot I, of people, you know, you could have gone out and been like, oh, well, I need to protect it. I need to, to sit back yeah. and not travel. No. And do those no. things. But well, you, can, you can really go out there and as long as you take care of yourself, you can do most of the things that you want to do. Yeah. And you can, yeah. if not, you can't travel right now, but yeah. You know, yeah. But that's not Most my of the time, not my goal. You travel yeah. and do do the things yeah. that you want, do the activities that you want. You ran a yeah. half marathon. You can, yeah. you know, it doesn't stop you from playing sports. No. It just maybe stops you from playing football because you right. don't want to get your chest yeah. cracked in. Yeah, I don't want to bash anything in. Yeah, you don't, mm-hmm. yeah, that's not good. You don't want to get in a contact sport if you have an extra kidney. Like, you just got to you know your limitations, but it doesn't mean yeah. that you can't. No. You can't. Not do just, everything. Just be cautious. Be cog- yeah. Know that you've got something, and just be careful with it. Um, honestly, uh, life is good. I mean, I haven't stopped at anything. Um, you know, part of that is you know before the even before the transplant. You know, first thing I think of was how do you th- say thank you for something like that. So for years after, uh, I wrote to my donor family for five years. Before she was able, before Rutho was able to write back and express, you know, her joy at my still being uh, surviving, and um, over the years that we've been in contact, uh, like I said, we visited for Thanksgiving um, last year for my 60th birthday. Uh, my girlfriend actually flew Rutha and her sister in to San Antonio, and they spent the weekend here, and we had a great time. So we're, we've become connected, uh, not to the point of you know having to be there every day. But, um, you know, if she's having a bad day, she'll text or call and say, hey, I just want to hear you. Um, and, you know, but knowing the story behind Marvin's uh, donation uh, has really kind of helped me. I, you know, it's, I, I have to live for two of us. You know, he was a young guy um, just starting on, on his adult life. And, you know... So if I do something, I always think about him. I always keep him in the fore, in the fore, fore part of my mind that, you know, would he do this? How's he going to like this? Would he have enjoyed this? Is Ruth going to kill me for trying this? You know, those kind of things. Um, the one thing that I probably won't do again, but it was a blast when I did it. Um, for my 59th birthday, uh, my girlfriend actually got me a ticket to skydive and we went up to San Marcos and, uh, yeah, I actually jumped out of a plane, a perfectly good plane. Uh, not sure it was the sanest thing to do, but oh, I've done, there you I've done it a there couple go. of times. There you go. Woo! There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> and uh, it was a blast. Oh, I mean, good lord. Um, wow. I mean, free falling doesn't hurt your heart. It should be. No, it's it's that sudden stop at the bottom. <laughs> yes, that's when you come into contact with the ground. That's the difficult part. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a transplant or not. If you do that no. wrong, it's yeah, if you do that, it's, it's a one-time thing, you know. It's like that's it. <laughs> well, but, but wow, yeah. I mean, just to, to circle back really quick, what you said about you know living yeah. for that that other person is just such yeah. a powerful message yeah. because some people don't know their donors, they don't know their families, right. and it and maybe it's because you know in my situation, I've tried to find them, and it's just it's been too long. It's hard, the yeah. Records are too far yeah. gone. It's yeah. Multiple states and different areas, so yeah. I don't know who they are. But I try and I have that same mentality, or I try to to say, you know, I'm out here doing things that you know hopefully would you know make them proud for their child that they lost, or would you know maybe yeah. that child would have grown up to like be this kind of person and right. be a, a positive influence in in the yeah. world and in society and do things that are adventurous too and not yeah. just hold hold back. Yeah, don't just sit on your butt. I mean, come on. Anybody can do that. Get out there and enjoy yourself. We we have proven in the last four months that anyone can just sit on their butt and not do anything. Oh, most certainly. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've actually uh, changed shape. I've gone from square to round. And uh, <laughs> so we're, yeah, I'm hoping to be able to get back out there and, and do a little bit more activity because I'm tired. Yeah. You know, it's not fun when your pants don't fit anymore. Yeah, that's why I only wear sweats and basketball shorts. Yeah, right? well, see, that was the problem. I thought you, don't I was realize, fine. you don't realize how much size you're getting. Yeah, you're, I, I yeah. thought I was doing fine. I had been in the gym for almost, you know, two years when quarantine hit for like six yeah. days a week for two years. Yeah. I was in yeah. great shape, and then I gained like thirty pounds over quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got closets full of clothes that don't Breaking really fit. Long shirts because I'm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Awesome. I, I, I think you've shared just amazing things with everyone. I appreciate hearing this and your story. Um, is there, I mean, all these questions are basically irrelevant now, but is there anything else that you would like to share um, about, you know, your journey or what you have in the future or um, any, anything inspiring to tell, tell these kids that may be struggling to, to want it, to want to go out and do something? Oh God, I don't know. I mean, you just don't let it hold you back. You know, it's not, it's not a, uh, a life sentence to sit in your living room, you know, get out and enjoy yourself. If something strikes your fancy, if you have a passion about something, um, if you find something interesting, go explore it. Um, uh, I'm still doing that. Uh, I did cooking school. I did the cheese thing. And as part of the cheese thing, I found I like wine. Um, so with wine, I've already taken the first two levels of uh, a sommelier certification. And hopefully, they canceled the one. I should be there right now. Um, but they canceled the course out in uh, Napa. Uh, so hopefully next September I get to go out and spend a, about 10 days in Napa, a couple of days working in the vineyard, and then a week in class and a huge, huge, cool, frightening test. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still doing stuff. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that with a bit of panic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just do something. Find something you like, enjoy it, and just go do it. That's, I mean... Yeah. That's awesome. That's what we, that's what we should all strive for is to just keep doing things. Right. So yep. Amen. Thank, you, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, uh, my I pleasure. You enjoy, you know, being on here and we'll, uh, we'll see you next yeah. time. Yeah, we'll be here. Bye Bye-bye.